Hello everybody, once again I am Lehman Crafton Jr. aka Zorval Chan, Less Than Guru. And today I am going to do uh, Earth Dawn 4th Edition. Uh, I have already done Earth Dawn 2nd Edition, was a game that I enjoyed. I played a short campaign for the 1st Edition, which I also enjoyed. I never saw either Classic or the uh, the third edition, but when fourth edition was released a, a few years back, I believe I was still playing second edition at the time and decided that I wanted uh, to take a look to see what the, the fourth edition was. And it was something that was very similar to the other editions. It kept a lot of the good things from those editions, um, but I think it added some more choices. I think that's, if I recall correctly, that was one of the things that I was impressed by the, the fourth edition. Um, recently, the Friday game that I am a game currently game mastering with uh, my, my Friday group with Torg Eternity, um, I am in need of I don't want to use the word relaxing. I'm in the need of winding down some. And so after we complete the current mega adventure that we are on, I asked if somebody else, if it would be possible to uh, game master something and let me be a player for a, a little while. And it seems like we might be doing Earth Dawn 4th Edition. So I figured, um, I would do this as both a creating a possible character for the game, as well as we are living in different areas. So we'll probably at least start with Roll20, also with the pandemic. Uh, starting in Roll20 makes sense. So since I only have the book as a PDF, I went ahead and created a game in Roll20 using the Earth Dawn 4th Edition character sheet that I will fill out. And if the person game mastering it makes a new one, I can either just transfer numbers over to a new character sheet, or if I decide in the meantime to make something different, I'll just make something different. But this is uh, the Earth Dawn 4th Edition. And. From what I've read, unfortunately, the actual physical copy, apparently, at least, it did have very, very bad uh, bindings, and pages fell out, and the spines broke, and things like that. I usually like to have a physical copy, um, but that's one reason why I didn't actually buy a physical copy. There's some nice artwork. Apparently, it was a Kickstarter. And they list everybody's name that was in the Kickstarter, and then you go into the table of contents. So this all will depend on whether or not my Game Master allows Windling. I admit I was the cause of having Windling banned in that group's Earth Dawn games. Um, we had, I started with the windling, and two of the other players had windlings, and it was too much for the game master. And I take responsibility for uh, being a problem with that. But I do love the concept of a windling that is not just necessarily annoying, but one that is actually very helpful for the group. And one of the uh, oh, I'm trying to read the disciples. They don't call them characters or character classes. I think they're disciplines or dis disciplines, maybe. Um, that is works, I think, well with a group and can help and is also amusing to me is the idea of a windling weaponsmith. And yes, I have played a windling weaponsmith. And sometimes I do get myself into stereotypes of, oh, Lehman is always a this, or Lehman is always a that. But sometimes the character concept is just so good to me, personally, that I want to go through a whole story, character arc, with that character. And sadly, the previous Earth Dawn that I had a Windling 
um, weaponsmith, it ended right before I felt that I got to the place that I wanted to get. And so with this character today, I wish to at least in 4th edition, take a look at the Windling Weaponsmith. If we, uh, if, if either Windling's not allowed or I decide to change my mind during the meantime between now and when we actually start playing the game, maybe I'll be something else. Maybe I'll be not a Windling Weaponsmith or maybe I'll be something completely different. I've had a Windling Scout, which I absolutely hated, and begged the Game Master to let me uh, drop it. And that's when I became a Windling um, weapon master. I did not like the scout at all. I thought it was absolutely worthless uh, discipline. Other people might disagree. I thought it was basically a thief that couldn't do any of the neat things thieves could do. But that's my opinion. Other people might have very good experiences with the scout. I also had played a windling cavalryman, uh, which I enjoyed up to a point. And I've played a troll cavalry man. So I haven't always been windlings and I haven't always been weaponsmiths. It's just the idea of a windling with a huge, like a strong windling with a huge hammer standing on top of an anvil with this like two handed hammer that's like probably even small compared to other people and making a full size. Uh, forging a full-size weapon or suit of armor to me is just the most hilarious thing that actually helps a group and is not actually annoying. It's just funny to think about in my mind without being annoying. So that's why I wish to uh, wish to think about this. So um, I just skipped a bunch of pages and here's the neat uh, step action dice, which uh, is something that it might seem offsetting because like every step or every so often your your die changes but that's like one of the cool things about gaming is you have all of these dice and being able to use all of these different types of dice in the game is just something that i've always enjoyed about earth dawn and exploding dice it matches it up with exploding dice and exploding dice are also one of those things that's kind of pretty cool so they're adepts, I guess, adepts and disciplines. So instead of character classes, you are adepts, your name giver races, and your discipline. And I did notice this yesterday when I was uh, looking, and I really like this. I like that it's not precise. It is good enough. They're showing a conversion from uh, the old, English, what America uses system, and then the metric system, and it's not like, you know, four quarts equals a gallon, one quart equals about a liter. Yes, it's not exactly, but it's close enough, and I really um, like that type of thing. You know, two pints equals a quart. You go from uh, the, the quart over to the metric system, a mile. Here, it's not the 2.54. It's just two and a half, close enough. Uh, one a three feet is about a yard, good enough. It's not something that you absolutely have to get precise when you're talking about a role playing. So I like that. So I want to go on it. And this is interesting. And I think a lot of these pictures are probably by the people in the original uh, Earth Dawn because either that or they're really doing good mimicking of that style there were a few different styles like this one and i don't have the names of them but like even like this is you know definitely done by a different person but it looks close and i want to say on one of these it was definitely something that sparked uh what, what i was remembering from previous editions i guess it's i'm not gonna Get to it, but I thought it was around here. Somewhere. Maybe not. Nope. Okay. Well, maybe we'll get to. It, maybe we won't. But the the art is varied, but it's very evocative of the the old art. They didn't go with the new style or or anything like that. They kind of 
kept it the old school way. So let me go back here. Uh, I go winlings, game information, starting attribute values, movement rate, flying is a 16. That's kind of cool. Over here on my character sheet, I'll go ahead and uh, I will choose winling. And that automatically looks like it adjusted these. Looks like I have 25 attribute points to start. Did it automatically do uh, where Karma is? Character sheet I'm not exactly used to. I just before I started here. Oh, here. here I guess Karma mod goes up to six or something. Creating character. Choose a dis discipline. Okay, so I've said that I want to be. Ah, here's the Karma mod. I said that I want to be a weaponsmith. So let's go ahead and choose that. And now it says choose a race, which I already did, and then generate attributes. So these just kind of tell you what you are. I remember I need a perception for the uh, weaponsmith. And the if you would go back to the races, perception, the the high windling has the windling dwarf and elf have the the best perception so that's also a a good thing a windling i'm not sure changing myself by being a windling so here is the different modifiers we can get and attribute point cost so i get 25 to begin with so i do want for a windling I do want to have a decent strength being a weapons smith. So I will be a strong windling. Now I'm not saying I will be a strong character, I'm saying I I will be a strong how do, how do you do that? Here. That didn't take away points. Or add points. Base. Ah, here's my base. Is that what goes up? Okay. Wow, that to get it to a four took five points. Wow. Huh. Even get it. Well, getting it to a six, then. Jeez. Looks like this is five. Huh. I guess I look over here with the actual dog. Okay. That actually gives me eight, maybe? Perception is a 14. Engine mode is a 12. Willpower is a 10. Toughness. Do that. 
going to cut down everything? No. Well, I guess that gives me a uh, 11 dex, 14 strength, 8 toughness, 14 perception, 10 willpower, 12 charisma, which would be what the race is, what I've modified my base to be. These are the modifications. Okay. Are the steps listed in there? I think the wind leaves were high with the climate. Initiative. Trying to see if these are. Okay, it looks like they're automatically adjusted. Looks like everything here has been adjusted for. Karma. Let's see if it's page 40. Way back there. Huh. Definitely not page 42. I'm going to go back to where Windley is on. This is Karma Modifier 6. That's right. Okay. Record race abilities, side talent ranks. I don't have spells. So with talents, we get eight points. Let's go for Weaponsmith. Okay, talents and abilities. So novice options, avoid blow, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I get three talent craftsmen. Go here. Okay. I'm not going to fill out things yet because as I've been doing with all the games, I don't do the details because it would be a lot of time to do. Um, so, charisma, perception, willpower. 
screen carving that I pick something to be my artisan skill because that is what is at least folklore stereotype a uh, what keeps people from uh, thinking that you are touched by a horror. This one talent, forge weapon, item history, melee weapon, steel thought, thread weed. Now I wonder if I get those automatically or if I choose eight from here or from here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is from Swordmaster Talents. Interesting. So that's a total of eight, and then the skills are, are different. And look at this. Let's look at that sword master. They only got one, two, three, four, five. They only have five. Uh, Discipline talent, so it looks like that eight is total from the the novice talent options and the uh, the other options. So I get free, so I'm assuming that's free. So then I want forge weapon. I want to help the party forge weapon. So. Let me go through and then I'll assign ranks later. But uh, item history, that is useful. If I remember correctly, I want to be able to, I at least want each one of these. One, two, three, four, five. I want to be able to do all of those melee weapons. Your thought. I remember that being a uh, helping with my willpower. And thread weaving being what allows me to increase the power of like magic items so far one two three four five so i can either pick three more there's a lot of interesting things here i won't want chill bash uh fire blood burst impression Avoid blow aware. Wow, there's so so many, so many. I just get a bunch at first rank or level, whatever they call them. Avoid blow. What? And aware, da dangerous, danger, Ooh, disarm trap, disarm trap, dangerous, wow.
by the time I read through the whole book again, I might realize that I'm doing bunches of things wrong. But let's go back to that character creation thing. See what else I might have. Determine characteristics, capacity, karma. Two ranks in knowledge skills, one rank in artisan, two ranks in speak language, one rank in read write, and eight free. Then equipping and then fleshing out. So, as I have done in many of these reviews, those would just be things that I'm looking down a list and trying to find out the best thing for my character when the character is pretty much defined by their attributes and their talents and the, in this case, the discipline. So I will, again, not go farther. This is also getting around 30 minutes, which is less than what some of mine were, but I just don't think that I would be able to do a good job without sitting down and, and reading this more. But from what I see, I have a Windling Weaponsmith who has the pretty good perception and strength, charisma, decent enough willpower to successfully be a Weaponsmith. A lot of interesting talents, talents that I would have to go through to make sure that that's exactly what I wanted to start off with. I have to figure out are any of those not available later? And that might require adjusting. Pick my skills, my artisan, my knowledge, all of those I'd have to go through to see how that works. Don't have to worry about spells, equipment, which I've really never done very much. And that, so let me, uh, I can put my name here. And then the, the character name, a Windling. Twindling weapons from there. So my Windling name, being a weaponsmith and not a free-loving nature person, he's probably a Windling that grew up in an urban or more urban. So I'm just going to name him Jake. But he's a a Windling, and he was probably either given a name or a, a nickname. So I'm going to call him Featherforge because he's light, but he's a forger. So Jake Featherforge. <laughs> so uh, this is my Earth Dawn 4th edition. It does look a little more complicated than Earth Dawn was in when I showed it, I believe it on the second step for second edition. Uh, more, more choices, I think. Uh, more valid choices. I don't remember Fireblood being something that I could have chosen in second edition. I could be completely wrong because I'm talking about at least five, six year old memories uh, on this. But we'll go ahead and stop here. If you like the video, hit like. If you dislike, you can hit dislike. Uh, subscribe if you want to. And once again, I am Lima Crafting Jr., a.k.a. Zorval Chan, and today, and I don't even know if I said it, but today was day 26 in the 31-day character creation challenge. So until next time, I will catch you later.